are going to talk today about a model called comprehensive medication management that engages pharmacists. Uh, we hope that our employer members and uh, will consider implementing this uh, in the coming uh, year. Uh, and also uh, this may be of interest to other attendees, including our benefit consultants as they are talking to their clients. Uh, without further ado, let me turn the floor over to Dr. Hirsch. Thank you, Neil. Um, it's, it's very nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. As Neil mentioned, I'm just going to give some background on what we're talking about, really, comprehensive medication management, which we also call CMM. Basically, what is it, why, why is it needed, and what do we know about its impact, just to start us off. And the passion led us here on the bottom here is to introduce the next slide that is going to tell you that parts, the slides I'm going to use actually are slides that I've been using with the Get the Medications Right Institute that Neil has already referred to. And the pictures on the bottoms are fellows of the GTMRX. And I just wanted to let you know, full disclosure, I am a fellow of GTMRX. Um, and the slides that you'll see are also um, from presentations I've made previously with them. Next slide, please. So what is comprehensive medication management? So this, this is a long definition, but I just wanna go through it fairly quickly. The, um, it's a systematic approach to medications where physicians and pharmacists together ensure that medications and medications is broad, whether it's prescription medications, non-prescription medications, alternative, traditional vitamins, nutritional supplements, all of that as a package are individually assessed to determine that each of those medications is appropriate for the patient, is effective for the medical condition that they have, and is safe. Um, given all of the other comorbidities and other medications that the patient is taking. And are the, is the patient actually taking the medications as intended? Comprehensive medication management is a very holistic package kind of um, approach to the patient's total medication load, if you will. Next slide, slide please. Why do we need the CMM? What's the problem? Um, there really is a, a loss, a real cost, in dollars and lives lost of non-optimized medication therapy. So it's been estimated that over $500 billion a year are wasted on non-optimized medication therapy. What is non-optimized? Non-optimized means the medication was prescribed, it was taken, it, either it failed and did not produce the desired effect or it caused other problems, new medical problems, or it caused new medical problems and it failed. And all the downstream costs from those situations, that's what makes up the $528.4 billion. Those downstream costs are things like more, more prescriptions, office visits, ED visits, hospitalizations, long-term care, to treat the problem that started to begin with. Um, when that was um, estimated in 2016 dollars, that was about 16% of our US total healthcare spent. Um, it was also estimated that there are 275,000 lives lost due to this non-optimized medication therapy. So we believe that CMM is one way to address this problem. Next slide, please. So what kind of pro medication problems are there? The one you hear about the most is non-adherence. Patients aren't taking their medications. So if you look over to the, the left there, there's a pie chart. Um, and the types of medication therapy problems that have been identified in populations of patients are, are the little pieces of the pie. The 15%, that's 15% is of the problems are due to non-adherence, patients not taking their medications correctly. There are a lot of other problems, such as the, the dose is too high, um, adverse drug re reactions, um, unnecessary therapy, didn't even need to be on the therapy, or inadequate therapy, there wasn't enough medications or, or treatments for the patients. So adherence, not adherence is just a piece of the types of problems that we are trying to solve for that $528 billion. Um, it's one that we see addressed a lot, especially in, in insured populations, because you can address it fairly easily, non-adherence. The others take more time. They take more effort, which I'm going to tell you about the CMM. To the right is just a, a little bit of a breakdown of where that $528 billion was spent on hospitalization, you would expect some those downstream costs for hospitalizations, 
$271 billion long-term care um, facilities, emergency department visits, provider visits, and other um, prescriptions. So that cost is made up of a lot of healthcare resource utilization. Next slide, please. So a proposed solution is CMM for the, the excess lives lost and the excess um, dollars that we are spending. And in, in full disclosure, I am an author on the paper that is uh, estimated the 528 billion. Um, here are some other facts to think about that relate to this though. The predicted US physician shortage up to 122,000 by 2032 can be addressed by additional clinical pharmacist services, working with the physicians to in a collaborative practice. And that's an important part of CMM. It is not done solely by a pharmacist, it's collaboration with the prescribers. Um, physicians spend a 26 seconds on guideline recommended components and another 23 seconds on all aspects of a prescription when talking to a patient about a new medication. That's less than a minute of time. And that's within a 16 minute um, office visit. The amount of information that a patient is getting on a new prescription is very, very limited. Patients need varying intensities of support to really optimize their, their medications. And I think we're gonna be talking about CMM, which is on one end of the spectrum, but there are other types of medication therapy management services pharmacists um, provide um, also, which some of our other speakers are going to speak about. Next slide, please. So one myth that, that Sandra would probably tell you about more than I will, um, that is that basically your PBMs that you're working with now, they are likely not providing CMM. You know, just to get, just to differentiate a little bit between some levels of pharmacy services, prior authorization, which you're probably all familiar with, that's a one-time thing. Um, it's typically not conducted by a pharmacist. And it's kind of a checklist. It's a checklist whether or not a patient has gone through or is, is getting an FDA approved indication or they've gone through step therapy if it's on their um, covered um, benefits. It's, it's just a checklist. Then there are two other things to introduce, medication therapy management, which is a pharmacist, um, usually conducted by a pharmacist. It's a medication management service covered by Medicare Part D. Um, which does involve a uh, review of the patient's records and medications and a medication action plan. It's usually a little bit siloed and it's not long-term and it's not necessarily in conjunction with the um, prescriber in a team-based. And that's where CMM comes in. It is um, the more reiterative and it's a team-based care for the patient. Next slide, please. This is the slide I like to show of how there's a continuum of pharmacist services. Over on the left, there's kind of a low intensity, um, which is kind of a minimal focus. It's focused on the drug specifically. It's triage, kind of, you know, where's a problem, where's not a problem with individual, with individual drugs. It's short term and it's episodic. Right? And things like comprehensive medication reviews, medication reconciliation, they're kind of on that end. There's, there are other things going through the spectrum. So I'll go down to the right-hand side the high intensity is the clinical, um, the CMM services, which is multifocused. It's focused on all the medications that I've already mentioned that the patient's taking, patient centric as a whole patient, multi relationships, different providers. The pharmacist is working with all providers that are prescribing, and it is over time, it is repetitive. Um, next slide, please. There are 10 steps to CMM and I'm not gonna tell you about them. <laughs> what, I'm, what I am gonna tell you is that th it is goal oriented and you'll have access to these later. It is goal, what are the goals for treatment goals for that patient? And patients have multiple comorbidities. You know, so it is complex um, and to be a full CMM, we, we need to be doing this in a team-based effort on these 10, 10 steps. Next slide, please. So benefits, let me just touch really briefly benefits to employers. And here I'm just summarizing some studies, um, improved clinical outcomes and employee health, especially in those with chronic conditions such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Decreased employee absenteeism has been demonstrated. Reduced healthcare utilization, including those emergency department visits, hospitalizations and readmissions to hospitals. Um, a reduction in total healthcare costs on average of 1,000 per participating uh, member per year, 
And then the return on investment has been um, estimated to average three to one to five to one in the first year of a CMM program. So those are just some examples of the impact of CMM. Next slide, please. Now I'm gonna show you three quick models. CMM is not just CMM. There are different models to achieve this. And I think that's one message I wanna get across, different models for different um, population groups. So the first one here, this was an example of an employer was working with a health system pharmacy. So think a hospital pharmacy. And they were able to improve the percent of patients diabetes at their diabetes goal from 66% to 75%. And they also reduce cholesterol significantly. The employer savings per patient, $253 per medication for medications, $1,000 to total cost for this program. Patient satisfaction, 4.8 out of five. Very satisfied patients. Next slide. Next model was an employer with an on-site pharmacist. So they brought a pharmacist into the employer site. They were able to improve their um, the percentage of patients that were at their diabetes goal from 55 to 72%. They also significantly improved blood pressure. Resource utilization, they saw a 30% lower hospitalizations and 24% lower ED visits. And the last model to show you on the next slide is where employers work directly with community pharmacists and sent their patients to community pharmacists. For that, they saw um, improvement from patients at their diabetes goal from 38% to 62%, and again, reduced cholesterol levels. Again, resource utilization was reduced, total medication costs decreased, no, I'm sorry, total medical costs decreased, physician, hospital, ED, labs decreased, but prescriptions costs de increased. And we do see that quite often. You may be utilizing more prescriptions, but you're saving money on those more expensive resources. And then this study actually measured sick days. They went from 12 average to six per year. And the employer themselves um, estimated that was 18, a value of $18,000 per year um, to that employer. Next slide. So that was a quick um, overview of kind of what CMM is, what the impact of it, from your standpoint, thinking of who might benefit from CMM, um, it, it really is patients with more chronic conditions. More chronic conditions, it's over time, higher util utilization ER visits, um, they have complex medication regimens. Another area is where they're, they're transitioning between different types of care, ER to home, hospitalization to home, ER into hospitalization. You know, lots of things are changing with those medications and it gets very confusing for everyone. Um, patients that are on new medications, um, on medications that require a lot of um, administration themselves, self-administration, inhalers, injectables. Yeah. And then just patients that have trouble you know, understanding their, their regimens. Because remember, patients aren't taking one medication. They're taking you know, 10, 15, depending on the age. And that doesn't even count necessarily all the, uh, the herbs and the supplements and the other um, vitamins they're taking. It can get really complex. So that's what CMM is for, right? For these complex patients over time, and CMM is working with the, um, the providers and, and other providers, prescribers, and a team-based method. So I'm gonna end there with that's the introduction of what we're talking about.